Hey guys, a very warm welcome back to my YouTube channel. Daniel Rosal here bringing you this video vlog today from Jerusalem, from my uh, home here in Jerusalem city centre. Um, on, we have another rain day going on outside. It's raining cats and dogs. And uh, Israeli society is a bit, a bit less resilient to rain than um, Irish society where I grew up because uh, I just called, I'm waiting on a delivery. So I called up a courier service and they said, well, you know, we mightn't get your uh, package to you today because it's raining. And I was like, aren't you guys in the business of delivery? Uh, so life here grinds, I wouldn't say grinds to a halt, but society is a bit less resilient to rain. We used to get power cuts um, when I lived in Nachlaot in Jerusalem, which uh, a lot of people who moved to Jerusalem started their Aliyah journey there. And whatever was wrong with the wiring, whenever it rained, we literally lose power um, in the apartments. So uh, these are the funny sort of uh, adventures you pick up as you go through your Aliyah journey. I wanted to talk today. I had a thought the other day while I was um, out and I thought I'd do another video blog about it. And that's this idea of instant Israeliness. And I want to call this blog the myth of instant Israeliness. Now, I don't want to just kind of take a pop shot at Nefesh Benefesh. That's very much not the point here. But I do want to offer maybe a different perspective than how they kind of talk about the process of becoming Israeli. So Nefesh Benefesh, uh, firstly, fill in context, is a great organization. They bring people on Aliyah to Israel. Aliyah means uh, Jewish migration to Israel. And Nefesh Benefesh, um, I didn't actually make Aliyah through Nefesh Benefesh because they didn't really service Ireland where I made Aliyah from. Uh, but a lot of Jewish immigrants from the US, let's say, will have Nefesh Benefesh and they kind of work a little bit beyond the Jewish agency in giving additional support um, to uh, potential Olim immigrants to Israel. And Nefesh Benefesh are great for kind of organizing these photo opportunities at Ben Gurion Airport. They put on these special Aliyah flights and they hand out little Israeli flags and they give you Israeli t-shirts and baseball caps and uh, a few of my friends actually have wound up in news articles both in Israeli news websites and international news sites because they were on one of these flights that ended up being photographed and you know so they become the kind of uh, whenever they have a story about immigration to Israel they'll reach for this they'll reach for one of these photographs and uh, they kind of use the hashtag officially Israeli a lot and they've been using this for a number of years and they're still using it and, and look there's nothing wrong with it but I just want to kind of throw an alternative perspective out there. So my alternative perspective is that becoming Israeli is a bloody slow and hard journey and that's okay. I think it's better to embrace the slowness than to think that you become Israeli. Nobody nobody becomes Israeli at the airport. Now I I, I know you're going to say that's that's not literally what nefesh benefesh mean. They mean that you officially get a Teodat Zahut, an Israeli ID number, and you're officially in the system and you sort of become part of this. But I think there is this kind of idea beyond that, that it's not just about the bureaucratic status of becoming Israeli. That's it. You're an Israeli now. That, that can become your new identity. I made Aliyah to Israel from Cork, Ireland in 2015, which means 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I'm just making sure that I have my numbers right. So I'm in my ninth, towards the end of my ninth year of Aliyah. So my 10th year Aliyahversary, which I've just realized I now need to sort of get, get ready to throw a party for, is going to be coming up in February next year. So I've been here for almost a decade which is really, really crazy to think. And I was just having the thought the other day, I'm just beginning to feel like I'm Israeli, that my Aliyah journey is just in its initial phases. Like, I feel like these are just, these, this, ten, this first 10 years, this first decade, was just kind of the basics, getting familiar with how Betuach Leomi works and how the Kupat Cholim works. And another milestone I've had recently since the start of this uh, Gaza war is I've started consuming news in Hebrew. Now that might sound like pathetic linguistic pro progress for someone. You've been here for 10 years, you're only now watching the news. And in a sense it is. And uh, I would say my, my, my defenses are that firstly, is uh, Hebrew is kind of a hard language. And secondly, that the Aliyah journey, especially if you make it yourself, which I did, is really, really hard. There is so much to do. The language, learning Hebrew is just one part of the picture. You've got to 
make a new circle of friends you've got to find a job you've got to find it figure out how insurance works you've got to figure out how renting apartment works there's a million and one tasks and for a lot of people this has been my experience although when you move to israel you get a ulpan which is a hebrew language course that's part of the benefits that's kind of just like almost kind of a formality yes you your hebrew will improve a little bit over the course of uh, that period that you're in ulpan but it's really just the start of the a very long journey. And I'm still continuously looking up words in Hebrew. I use Google Translate and an app called Morphix, M-O-R-F-I-X. I um, really recommend it because you can save a word list and then just go back and refresh on the vocab you pick up. And every time I watch the Israeli news, um, you know, like right now, as I mentioned, there's a lot of news going on. I pick up a few words. So basically, I don't want to make this a super long video because it's not really a very long thought that I'm trying to get across here. I like Nefesh Benefesh. They do great work. The officially Israeli hashtag is nice to encourage people that they've started. But I think here's my idea for a separate, a different hashtags as a marketing guy. The journey, the journey of a lifetime begins. That's a bit too long. Um, Becoming, you know, the, the start, start of the Israel journey uh, welcome to Israel, hashtag welcome to Israel, um, you know, because I think that's really what it is. It's the very, very first stage when you move here in such a long journey. And, you know, I've met people for, people really kind of become Israeli in different ways. I've met people who've been here for 20, 30 years who really barely speak any Hebrew. And I've met people who've been here for a third of the time I've been here for three years who, whose Hebrew is far, far better than mine. Um, so I think there's a, there's a lot of variables. One of the variables in uh, Hebrew attainment that I didn't do because I came too late um, was uh, was uh, doing the army in Israel. And the army in Israel is famous not just as an army, but also as a sort of integration fast track. So I think there are probably people who do the army integrate much quicker into Israeli society in terms of making friends, picking up their Hebrew but everybody does it at their own pace and there's no such thing as, you know, stepping off a plane and that's it, you're Israeli now. Even the people on the fast track, um, it's going to take them at least a few years to just get the lay of the land. And, uh, you know, so that's just basically what I want to say. I want to give people permission really more than anything. Not that anyone needs permission from me to accept this as a long-term journey. And what, what, I, what I'm trying to do at the moment is just embrace the slowness of the journey. I'm currently 34 and I might be becoming Israeli until the day I die, potentially. Um, a bit of a morbid thought, but that's how I feel like it is. Uh, one one other thought is, I would say, is that sort of there's this weird in-between period that so many immigrants go through talking about national identity. Um, because, you know, some people say, how do you feel now? Do you feel, for example, in my case, do I feel Irish? And my particular identity with Ireland is very com is very much complicated by the extremely difficult um, political relationship between Israel and Ireland and the anti-Semitism we're seeing in Ireland and the hostility we're seeing towards Israel coming from Ireland. So I would say in my case, it's kind of a lot, it's actually easier for me to move away from my Irish identity than, let's say, Americans who don't have that sort of feeling of a conflicting duality. Um, so I feel kind of like, well, I feel really like I'm in between two worlds at the moment. I definitely don't feel, um, I mean, I am an Israeli, I have an Israeli passport, I have an Israeli citizenship, but I feel like I almost don't deserve to call myself an Israeli until my Hebrew is at a certain level, until my integration's at a certain level. And, you know, that, that's, that's my perspective. People would say that's ridiculous. You are an Israeli. You've, you know, you've paid your dues, you've paid your taxes. I literally do pay my taxes, of course. Uh, but, um, I feel kind of between those two worlds, my, my Irish background definitely informs, um, my approach to life. And that's a lot of, there's a lot of difference between immigrants to Israel, whether they're from the UK and Ireland and, native Israelis and I think those differences are always going to be there to some extent um you know the things I find difficult about Israeli culture would be stuff like maybe sometimes the kind of people can be a little bit argumentative and the I feel like a very kind of core part of the Irish identity 
is peacemaking or being conciliatory and that has a negative as well in that sometimes people tend to push aside differences and just pretend everyone's very polite and everybody's very happy whereas Israelis kind of clash a lot um, but at least you kind of know where you stand with people. Anyway, this is really a separate topic about sort of the cultural differences that maybe I'll do a video on at some point. But that's just a thought I wanted to get across. I hope that was at least uh, somewhat coherent. If you've also made the Aliyah journey, uh, would love to hear how you feel about this topic of becoming Israeli. How Israeli do you feel? Do you agree with Snafish Benafish that you jump off a plane and are Israeli? Or do you think like more like me that it's a lifelong uh, process of evolution, slow character and cultural evolution and acclim acclimatization? Thanks for watching for uh, today's video from Jerusalem. Hope everyone is keeping well out there wherever you are watching this in the world. And more videos as ever will be coming to this channel very soon.